Shalom, family. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, Damashaya, you know, the one that carries the burden of Yah, his voice, our high priest, and soon coming king. Hear, O Yeshara. Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the children of Yeshara. They will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. This is the legacy that we have inherited from our captors blood and all kinds of flesh do you know when they kidnapped us and brought us to this land they threw us the worst parts of the meat didn't they the intestines the stomach and our people are still eating them today. Then we have our steaks. Rare. Raw. And bloody. Where did we learn this stuff from? Our captors. They're the ones who eat red, bloody, meat with Worcestershire sauce and A1 sauce dripping in blood mmm mmm good this is a horrible thing and it is one of the things that would prohibit us from entering into the kingdom. Let's begin. Genesis chapter 9 verses 1 to 3. Verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons. Can we stop for a moment? The text is deceiving. Who blessed Noah and his sons? Was it God? No. You have to pull out your blue letter Bible, check the Strong's box, and look under the number. This number would be H430. What does that mean? The Alayam. Who are the Alayam? They are the servants of Yah. You would call them his angels. So the Aliyam are the ones who bless Noah and his sons. Who do the Aliyam represent? Yahuwah. They are carrying out the instructions of the Most High. Yes. Here. Here's an example for you of another person who was blessed by the Aliyam and it uses the same word God Jacob Jacob his name wasn't changed yet but he wrestled with the Aliyam mm -hmm. and the morning the sun was beginning to rise and the Aliyam said let me go and Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. See the same word? And the Alayam blessed Noah and his sons. Now Jacob is asking the Alayam to bless him. What did the Alayam say? Because you are a prince that has prevailed against the Alayam and men. Your name shall be called Yesharo. 
That's how we got our name. And said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. This is the second time that this command went out. Replenish. Do you see that word? In Genesis, it says the same thing after the Alayam created man. Mm -hmm. In their own image and their likeness, Yahuwah came down from heaven and blew the breath of life into man and man became a living soul. So the Alayam commanded uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis to be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth. The word replenish means that something was here before. Did you know that there was two floods? The earth was flooded when the Alayam was floating over the waters. There were two floods. There were people, civilizations that were here before that Yah had destroyed. And this is the second time. Verse two. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon the fishes of the sea. Note, these creatures were not in fear of man at this time. Did you know that? Hmm. How did... Noah get all of those creatures in the ark. <laughs> no fear. But now, these creatures would be afraid of us because we would hunt them, kill them, and consume them. Into your hand are they delivered. You make the choice of whether you will eat flesh or not. Verse 3, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. In the beginning, our food, our meat was, even as the green herb, have I given you all things. That was the meat that he prescribed for us. Perfect. Yeah. So now he's telling you that I'm giving you all of the creatures on the earth for food. You choose. Verse 4. The prohibition. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Is that clear? You cannot eat anything with blood. Verse 5. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. You eat the blood of those animals. He's going to require your blood. At the hand of every beast will I require it. Every one that you have eaten, consumed, with the blood in it, he's going to require it of you. Hmm. Praise Yah for the Day of Atonement, right? For the sins of omission, you know, the ones that you didn't really know too much about. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. If you shed another man's blood, his brother is responsible to go and to shed your blood according to the law. An eye for an eye, brothers and sisters. Leviticus chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. Let's get a little more clear understanding what we can eat and what we can't verse 14 and he who is he the priest shall offer therefore his offering even an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah the fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is above the inwards hmm the priest carries the burden of Yah. He is responsible for 
carving up the sacrifice that you bring before Yahuwah. What is he going to trim off? The fat. All of the fat that covers the inward parts. And the fat that is above the inwards. Verse 15. And the two kidneys. And the fat that is upon upon them. Which is by the flanks. And the call above the liver. With the kidneys. It shall be taken away. All right. So what shall be excluded? Fat. Two kidneys. And the call. Do you know what the call is? It's a fatty substance above the liver. Do you know what they use the call for today? To make your sausages. Let me say that again. They use the coal that is above the liver that is supposed to be taken away. They use that to create the casing in which you put your sausages in. Verse 16. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. What is he going to burn? The kidneys. The fat. And the coal. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is Yahuwah's. Wow. We've been eating fat and call all these years, haven't we? But we didn't know. Verse 17. It shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings hmm that ye eat neither fat nor blood is that clear hey did you notice something there's a perpetual statute that means it comes down from generation to generation to generation And it only applies to seed, really. Well, there's another group that it applies to, the stranger. But mostly, these laws are for seed. Everyone else who attaches themselves to us must follow the same laws that we follow. But these laws were passed down to the children of Yeshua that we eat neither fat nor blood. What is the penalty? Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Yeshua or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood, any kind of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. And will cut him off from among his people. Is that clear? Is that clear, brothers and sisters? Stay away from it. It would prohibit you from going into the kingdom. Yeah. You know, there's a lot to learn. This is why we're preparing ourselves for his return. We want to be ready. We don't want the excess baggage upon us when he comes. We want to be like him. We want to walk as he walked. Perfect. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 19 to 20. Yes, it is in the New Testament. In more places than one. Brother David. If it's in the New Testament. That we are not to eat blood. Why is it that the Europeans. Who are Christians. Eat their steaks. Red. Raw. Bloody. 
Hmm. Dear Christianity is a joke. This is why you must come back to a pure faith. Keeping the ways of Yahuwah. Verse 19. Wherefore my sentence is. Who's giving this sentence? James the Apostle. He must have been over the council. That we trouble not them. Trouble not who? The brothers that were coming in from the northern kingdom. Did it return back to Yahuwah? And the spirit of Yah was poured out amongst them, which from among the Gentiles are turned back to Yah. Mm-hmm. You see that? They worded this one correctly. Verse 20. But that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols. And from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. Why did they have this council? Well, because the brothers were coming back in, and there was a group called the Judaizers. They told our brothers, once they came in with great excitement, that you cannot be saved unless you are circumcised brought forth a great dilemma. I want you to understand that these were grown men. You want them to circumcise their penis in order to be saved. Do you know what would have happened if you were to put this burden on them from the inception? They're going to turn away from Yah. We're talking about a lot of pain here. Hey, brothers, just think someone putting a knife to the head of your penis. Circumcision was supposed to be done when you're eight days old, when you're unaware of what is happening. Not when you're a full man. But our brothers did it when they returned from Babylon. They were all circumcised. But here we had a group of people that said that you cannot be saved unless you're circumcised first so they brought this whole council together just to speak about that point and one of the brothers said here how do we put this burden upon those who came from amongst the gentiles which neither us or our fathers could bear you know taking a knife and cutting the head of the penis just think about it men then you will understand what all of the contention was over here. So James says, let me give you my sentence. That we troubled them not to cut their penis. Those who came from amongst the Gentiles who have turned back to Yah. But that we write unto them. That they abstain from pollutions of idols. What was that? Pig. The Europeans were sacrificing pigs on the altar. Then after they sacrificed the pigs on the altar, then you were supposed to eat the meat. And from fornication. <laughs> you know, that's big amongst us today. And from things strangle. If you strangle the creature, that's like the creature being dead of himself. He wasn't able to bleed out properly and from blood. Look at that. Even in the New Testament, it tells you not to eat blood. Hmm. Well, you may be asking, well, what about circumcision? Isn't circumcision according to the law? Well, listen to what James said after. If you go down a little further, I want you to read it for yourself so that you can see. James said in all of the assemblies in Yesharo, the law is spoken every single week. Let them learn in increments and apply it to themselves. That is the same way we learn today. An in increment. Somebody just came in today. 
you can't expect him to be on your level. But when you have the brothers who are coming in today, they are on fire. The brothers and the sisters and the children, they are on fire. They'll come out of this thing in no time. Because all they do is pick up that book and study and apply. Study and apply. Study and apply. He who hath began a good work in you will perform it until the day of the gathering. So look, even in the New Testament, you are to abstain from pork and blood. Jubilees, chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. Now this one is amazing. How the Father mixed the months, the Sabbaths, the feasts, the jubilees, the new moons, the seasons, the Sabbaths, and the festivals, with eating all kinds of blood, with all kinds of flesh. Verse 37. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order. What is he talking about? Well, you know, the moon comes in 10 days before the spring equinox. And they saw that there were problems and they decided to make adjustments. What problems did they see? They don't know. They came from the imagination of their mind. But they made adjustments and they disturbed the order. Once they disturbed the order, they made an abominable day the day of testimony. How did they disturb the order? You start from the dark moon. You're going to have an abominable day as the day of testimony. You start from the full moon. You're going to have an abominable day the day of testimony. You keep your Sabbaths on the Gregorian calendar. You're going to make an abominable day the day of testimony. You add a 13th month. You're going to make an abominable day the day of testimony. And an unclean day. A feast day. And they will confound, confuse all the days. And that is what's happening today. The holy with the unclean. And the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong. Who is he speaking about? The children of Yeshua. And the children of Noah. As to the months. Mm-hmm. And Sabbaths. Yes. And feasts. Mm-hmm. And jubilees. Verse 38. For this reason, I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after your death, Noah, we started with Noah and we're ending with Noah. After your death, Noah, your children will disturb them. You see that? This happened all the way back then also. So that they will not. Make the year 364 days only. <laughs> I wonder how many days they were making it. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons. Check. And the seasons. Check. And Sabbaths. Check. And festivals. Check. All of them were wrong. We're just getting back on track today. And listen what he says next. And they will eat all kinds of blood. Blood sausage. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Have you ever heard of that? It's made of just blood. Do you know anyone or have you ever eaten it? Well, if you have, you see that that is an abominable thing. What about your steaks? Rare? Medium rare? You know, 
when you put your sauces in the plate and you just get your steak seared on the fire then you cut it open and the blood comes pouring out and you mix it with your A1 sauce and you say, mm, this is the best steak I've ever had. And they will eat all kinds of blood. Here's another one for you. Gravy with all kinds of flesh. Shellfish pork, bloody meat, fat, and here's the other one, the call, the casing that we eat our sausages, mm -hmm. is this accurate, to the letter because that's what we've done in the lands of our captivity where do we learn these things from the Europeans do you know that once you eat the blood you have eaten the soul of that animal have you ever heard the term you are what you eat yeah, I heard that before. So what have you turned into a cow, a pig, a goat, a sheep? Eating red, bloody meat? Mm-hmm. We have to be careful. This can prohibit you from the kingdom. Then how should we cook our meats, Brother David? Well, the best way to do it is to do it the way the priest does. You're not making a sacrifice. Do you understand? But what you're doing is that you're cooking your meat. Put it on the fire, you know, on the grill. Let the blood drip down into the fire. Cook it until the bone is cooked. Yeah. Inside of the bone is blood. So if you don't cook it thoroughly, even blood will be in your meat from the bone. All kinds of blood. Have you ever made steaks in a pan? Or any type of meat in a pan? And after you've cooked your meat, you would see that they would take the meat out of the pan and then they would put their flour, some seasoning, and you would just mix it around with the drippings that's in the bottom of the pan. Do you know what those drippings are? It is blood. And what is produced from the flour and the seasoning and the mixing with the drippings that is in the pan, blood gravy. And they will eat all kinds of blood. Do you see how accurate this is? It would prohibit you from the kingdom. So there's some things we have to put away. Yeah, there is. No more sausages and stuff like that, even though they say beef. Because they're encased in coal. Now, if you can find some that is not encased in coal, it's a different story. But they're encasing it in coal, and the coal is the fat which belongs to Yahuwah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He does not want you to eat neither fat nor blood, because in that fat, are toxins. In that pig are toxins. In those shellfish are toxins. In those kidneys are toxins. 
father's looking out for your welfare. This is why he says that you will become unclean if you eat these things. So brothers and sisters, abstain from eating fat, from eating blood, from eating all kinds of shellfish. The only thing you can eat as far as in the sea is things with fins and scales. Leave the sausages and hot dogs. Leave it all alone because they are encased in coal. And everything else that you can come up with. If I miss something, seek it out yourself. We want to purify ourselves. Because we are preparing for the kingdom. Shalom.